As Director of Clinical Operations and Outcomes for the Medical College of Georgia's Tobacco Cessation Clinic, I hope today everyone will join us in our efforts to make a difference in the lives of patients who use tobacco. Every eight seconds throughout the world, someone dies from tobacco-related diseases or tobacco-related disorders. In the United States, 45 million individuals are tobacco dependent. And in the state of Georgia, 19% of our population smoke cigarettes. Let's take a look at the life of some smokers. I think you'll identify with some of them as patients, colleagues, or even family members or friends you've known. I'm glad we finally got together. Me too. Would you excuse me? Sure. Welcome to the topsy-turvy world of the cigarette smoker. Smokers can rationalize their behavior and offer all sorts of reasonable sounding explanations for why they do something so irrational and potentially deadly. There's a lot of benefits to smoking. It's just something you got there. It's a great relaxer. Like right now, it would be great to have a cigarette in my hand because then my arm could relax. I think it, it actually puts you in some type of focus. It really makes me feel a lot better. It's a really safe thing to do. It's considered legal. If you have a drink in one hand, you have to have a cigarette in the other hand or else you fall over because you're offside. It's something to socialize around. It's not something that's gonna really alter your, your brain cells. It's like a good friend. And it's like yours. You paid for it, you bought it, you're gonna smoke it. You put so much emotion into a cigarette, especially, you know, if you're really ticked off at somebody, you're just smoking, just boom. And I smoke so other people can live. <laughs> I can handle the situation now. All that emotion is in that cigarette you just pitched there and you can walk away from it. Smoke, kill, smoke, kill, smoke. It's just like a breath of fresh air. After all, smokers reason, Smoking goes so well with so many other things in their lives that not having those cigarettes would leave a huge void. First thing I do when I get up in the morning is smoke a cigarette. Oh, I smoked two or three cigarettes before I got out of bed in the morning. And I wake up in the morning. A cigarette in the morning. In the morning, while you're waiting for the bus, you smoke a cigarette. With the coffee. First one in the morning has to be with my cup of coffee. I don't have a cigarette without something. Coffee. Coffee and cigarette. Gotta have a cigarette with my coffee. Has to. But cigarettes and coffee, boy. They go hand in hand. It's either a cigarette and a cup of coffee. It's like having peanut butter and jelly. And it's just not coffee unless I have my cigarette. If I have a fight with somebody. A cigarette after lunch. After lunch. Before dinner and then two after dinner. Smoking and driving. Driving in a car. When I'm out. Before I go to bed. With two cups of coffee. And right before I go to bed. The cigarette after dinner. Definitely want to smoke after sex. Telephone calls. The telephone. Every time you pick up the phone. After coffee, after meals, after sex, after whatever, you just want to smoke. It's clear that the act of smoking is much more than a habit to many smokers. Pack of camels. It defines them. I'll take a pack of Misty Lights, please. Tells the world who they are. Let me have a box of Marlboro. It's tough to generalize about smokers, though. Some are aware of the damage that smoking does to their bodies, their minds, and their social acceptance. Can't smoke in the airport. We don't live in an age where smoking is tolerated in this country. You can't smoke in restaurants. You have a stigma attached to you if you're a smoker. You can't smoke pretty much anywhere. You're considered inappropriate. Yet they keep on lighting up. Others seem completely unaware of the risks and dangers, or at least they're unwilling to acknowledge them crazy, but I see other people doing it, you know, other people who are, say if I see an older guy smoking, I go, well, he's, he's all right, so I'll be all right. <laughs> We're here today to focus on the people who are looking for help. Either they're starting to give some thought to giving up smoking, they've definitely decided it's time to quit, or they're already begun the process of quitting and are having trouble sticking to it. Their situations, reasons, and motivations are as unique and varied as the smokers themselves. It's dirty. You become a slave to cigarettes. And it makes your teeth yellow. It hurts my throat. And it affects every aspect of your body. Tender spot inside my lip. It gives you wrinkles. My husband hates it. Clogs your pores. I don't really like it. Your skin doesn't breathe. Really, I don't like it. 
Each of these people recognizes that the path to a successful quit is going to be bumpy. Oh, have I quit. A hundred times at least. Well, let me tell you. I quit for a day. I first started smoking when I was 16. About eight times. I smoked for 10 years. I quit for another day. I didn't have a cigarette for 12 years. Twice. And then I got back into theater. I'd say 15. And the director asked me if I would mind smoking f for this role. I tried acupuncture. And I let that sucker up. Wisdom out the window. It tasted just like I remember it tasting. Uh, about eight times. Now I've been smoking for about four years. I couldn't quit. And I'm just so livid that I'm smoking. They know that there are going to be barriers, pitfalls, and temptations all along the way that can knock them off the path at any time. There's always somebody out there, a friend, who has a cigarette, who also smokes, and says, come on, you can just have one cigarette with me. They know they're hooked. The addiction to smoking is terrible. It is horrendous. It is, you, you cannot be your own person because you could be sitting in a movie, you have to go to the men's room to have a cigarette. You can be sitting in a Broadway play, you have to walk out to have a cigarette. You can be sitting anywhere or doing anything and you have to stop in order to satisfy your addiction and smoke your cigarette. And they'll go to almost any links to get that cigarette. I went looking for butts. I rolled pencil shavings to smoke a cigarette. And I found a butt in the uh, in the, the hallway. First, I tried to keep it to the butts of the, the cigarette butts of people that I knew. <laughs> These smokers clearly need help, support, encouragement, and most importantly, techniques to help them cope and become smoke-free. I don't need somebody to talk to. I need someone that can talk to me, a professional who knows what I'm experiencing, what my body's experiencing, and can give me instruction and, and guidance and support in getting through that. Let's review three important principles. First, treating tobacco dependence requires a comprehensive approach to address the three cycles of nicotine addiction. Addressing all three is critical for success. The behavior cycle involves breaking old routines, such as hand-to-mouth of smoking a cigarette or smoking while drinking coffee. That's where the value of counseling comes in to learn new, healthy routines, such as drinking water and not smoking. The social or emotional cycle involves breaking old routines of smoking when stressed or socializing with friends. That's where the value of counseling comes in again to learn new healthy coping routines such as exercise. The physical or biological cycle involves breaking the need for a nicotine fix. That's where the value of medication comes in to ease the suffering from cravings and withdrawals. The second principle is about the power of nicotine addiction and it cannot be underestimated just as the opening video clip demonstrated. It is the most powerful drug and the hardest drug addiction to kick. Substance abuse specialists repeatedly report that it is harder for someone to quit smoking than to quit using heroin. As depicted in this slide, within seconds of nicotine entering the bloodstream, nicotinic receptors in the brain are stimulated. Specifically, research has shown the effect of nicotine on the nicotinic receptor sites in the ventral tegmental area and how that results in the release of dopamine. The effect of nicotine with the dopamine reward system leads to the pattern of self-medicating by smokers and helps to explain nicotine addiction behavior. Research has shown that the half-life of nicotine is approximately two hours. So when not getting the fix, signs start surfacing such as irritability. The same happens when smokers quit cold turkey. The good news is that most withdrawal symptoms peak over one to two days and subside within two to four weeks. But without help, for some, it is a long and bumpy four weeks. To keep patients from starting the addiction cycle over again, 
which leads to a chronic relapsing condition. Healthcare providers must work on the barriers to effective smoking cessation interventions, such as withdrawal symptoms, which serve as a negative reinforcer, and pleasure responses, which serve as a positive reinforcer. To emphasize the power of nicotine addiction and its behavioral and physiological impact, let's consider this simple math exercise. It is known that one cigarette typically requires 20 puffs or inhalations to consume. That's also 20 hand-to-mouth behaviors and 20 hits of nicotine. Imagine if someone smoked a pack a day, that's 20 cigarettes or 200 puffs or inhalations consumed and 200 hand-to-mouth behaviors and 200 hits of nicotine, all of that performed in just one day. Imagine doing that every day for a year. That's 73,000 hits of nicotine and hand-to-mouth behaviors. Take it a step further. Imagine doing it every day for 20 years. That's 1.4 million hits of nicotine and hand-to-mouth behaviors. I puffed on it. I couldn't smoke the whole thing, and it smelled so bad. And... That helps to pull really together why it is so hard to quit. <laughs> All three cycles of addiction must be addressed, behavior, emotional, and biological. The third important principle is that it's not the nicotine that kills. Nicotine addicts. It's the toxins in the cigarettes and the toxins in the tobacco that damages at the molecular and the cellular level. In one cigarette, there are over 4,800 toxins, including carcinogens. The tobacco industry manipulates the pH of the tobacco so that it gets into the bloodstream very, very fast. Such chemical manipulation of the pH includes adding toxins as ammonia, formaldehyde, and cadmium in each cigarette or each tobacco product. The faster the nicotine delivery, the faster the addiction, which makes great profits for the tobacco industry and deadly outcomes for the consumer. Taking a closer look at the seven first-line medications for tobacco dependence, it is important to know that one size does not fit all, and each treatment option or options must be weighed carefully for the risk and benefits of using either one of these medications or using two or more in combination. Regardless of the choice, medication and counseling go hand in hand. Best outcomes occur when patients are fully engaged in the process. Learning how to change behaviors that they have performed for years takes time and takes concentration. Cold turkey or waiting out two to four weeks for the withdrawals to subside can hinder successful long-term tobacco abstinence. This slide shows the options that have been available since 1984 with the Nicorette replacement therapy gum or referred to as NRT gum being the very first, and Chantix being the most recent. Let's review a few key points for each. First, about nicotine replacement therapy, or NRT. Even though patients will receive a drug, nicotine, they will not receive the 4,800 toxins that are associated with each cigarette. Thinking about one cigarette being equivalent to one milligram of nicotine helps to put in context why the dosing is as it is for NRT medication. If a patient smokes one pack a day, that's approximately 20 milligrams of nicotine needing to be replaced per day while making the quit attempt. Second, as with all medication, over-the-counter or prescription, benefits and risks must be considered. NRT has precautions and contraindications that must be observed. NRT gum was the first product to help patients quit. Initially, NRT gum required a prescription. Now the gum is over the counter and comes in two and four milligrams and a variety of flavors. It is dosed based on the number of cigarettes smoked per day. It is chewed not like regular gum and that is the usual problem when patients are not successful with it. It is chewed slowly, and when the tingling sensation occurs or flavor is tasted, then the gum is parked in the cheek. 
This is repeated for at least 20 minutes. If not done for 20 minutes, there will be a subtherapeutic effect of the nicotine. The NRT patch was the second product on the market. It too started out as a prescription and now can be purchased over the counter. The leading problem with misuse of the patch is cutting it in half and inappropriate dosing. The strength of the patch is based on the number of cigarettes smoked per day and provides sustained nicotine delivery over 14 to 24 hours. Key things to remember about the NRT patch include not cutting it in half, removing it at bedtime if there is conditions of sleep disorders, and also reminding patients that it is okay to bathe or swim with the patch. The NRT spray was the third product on the market. It continues to require prescription and typically is reserved for those patients that are highly dependent and the spray provides intermediate nicotine delivery over one to two hours. The NRT lozenge was the fourth product to enter the market. Available over the counter, this product provides intermediate nicotine delivery over two hours and it is dosed based on the timing of lighting up the first cigarette for the day. The leading misuse of the lozenge is biting it like candy or not dissolving it in the mouth long enough. To be therapeutic, it must dissolve over 20 minutes. Similar to the NRT gum, nicotine is absorbed better in alkalinic environments, so food and beverages should be withheld 10 to 15 minutes prior to use during use, and 10 to 15 minutes after use. The last product to enter the market is the NRT inhaler, which requires a prescription. It works best for high nicotine dependence, resembling a cigarette, and puffed as if trying to light a pipe. This product provides intermediate nicotine delivery over one to two hours. Pulling the pharmacotherapy information together helps by looking closely at this slide. It shows the plasma nicotine concentrations of the NRT products compared to a cigarette. And it shows on the bottom of the graph the delivery time of the nicotine. First, nothing gets in the bloodstream any faster than a cigarette. The NRT product that comes the closest to that is the nasal spray. With all NRT products, knowing the concentration and timing of nicotine delivery is important. Research shows that it takes an average of seven to 10 quit attempts for long-term success. So getting dose right and medication advice right is critically important. The only first line oral medications that are FDA approved for smoking cessation are Zyban and Chantix. Zyban, also known as Bupropion SR, has been available by prescription since 1997. It has consistently had good results with its action on the dopamine and norepinephrine neurotransmitters to help patients quit. However, as this slide depicts, Zyban must be used cautiously with several conditions, such as a past history of seizure disorder or cranial trauma, and it has several contraindications, such as current seizure disorder and eating disorders. It also has known drug-to-drug -drug interactions that must be carefully considered. Zyban dosing recommendations are provided in the pocket guide but key is titrating the dose up gradually for two weeks prior to quitting cigarettes. Also, research has found that using Zyban in combination with the NRT patch and or the NRT gum or lozenge doubles the cessation rate. Chantix is the last drug to discuss. After 10 years of no new smoking cessation products, varenicline or Chantix, became available by prescription in 2006. Through its action as a partial nicotinic receptor agonist and total nicotinic receptor antagonist, evidence supports the effectiveness of its use. Similar to Zyban, titrating the dose up prior to stopping cigarette use is important. For Chantix, this is done over a one-week period. 
Also, patients must be closely evaluated for psychiatric mental health disorders prior to prescribing Chantix. In summary, each of the pharmacotherapy options have evidence to support their effectiveness. However, it is important to remember, behavioral counseling used in conjunction with medications will double or even triple quit rates. As the yellow bars depict on this slide, an active drug can increase long-term success rates up to 23%. And if counseling occurs with medication, the success rate will double or even triple. It is the comprehensive approach to tackle all cycles of nicotine addiction. The behavioral routines such as hand to mouth, the psychosocial, smoking when stressed or socializing with friends, and the physiological that will make a difference, not just taking the medication.